put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Contagion Video Game Review Eight interchangeable characters with utterly superfluous backgrounds have to deal with the growing zombie epidemic. I say interchangeable because where Left 4 Dead has them relate to each other and with very distinct personalities, here they sort of have personalities but they don't really yeah, they don't really engage with each other with any kind of you know yeah, relationship or like. It does come across some in how they phrase, you know, bragging at zombies or, you know, calling for more ammo, such and such, but nevertheless interchangeable. And eight, of course, because in this originally you could play as only eight, now you can play 16, so it doesn't completely work, but Nevertheless, you can tell them apart. And yes, they have to fight the zombies in seven separate levels and one tutorial level. Now apparently the tutorial level is at least in part there to help with the workshop so that people can yeah, have a, a tutorial for making levels. It works fine as a tutorial for learning how to play the game as well. It's small. There are these vending machines, two, one for guns, one for ammo. There are only a few entrances, and the zombies come entirely in waves. It's a lot like survival mode of Left 4 Dead and such. Yeah, you can just be running around trying out the different guns, seeing how to deal with the zombies and such, because there is a lot to learn. Now, the different levels include a police station, a research facility, a park, a train station and maintenance tunnel, suburbia, and a city with a diner, a bank, a gas station, and a gun store. And yeah, they're among others. Now, it's also worth noting, and, and the city has these military checkpoints, and in general you can tell it was attempted to contain this epidemic, but it didn't work out. You know, you find a, an abandoned military outpost and such. It's also worth noting the Eight characters are entirely without class, by which I mean they're, they all have the same abilities and same weapon skills and such. Now, before I get too much into this, I will say that personally I like this game a lot, but I do appreciate that there are, you know, some flaws to it, and I will try to yeah, highlight both what I like about it and, you know, the the various flaws. And I base the review on having played for 33 and a half hours over the course of about two weeks. Now, the... the, the levels are fairly open and large and they can be confusing. There are a number of dead ends and the, it's especially until you really get a handle on the different levels. There's a lot to learn before you can really do well at this and 
understandably, there are some that just plain, yeah, find it too steep a learning curve, which is not any kind of, you know, insult to them. Now, in this, death is just another beginning, and I'll get to how that works. In this, if you want a map, you're going to have to draw one yourself. You do, some of the loading screens have a, you know, yeah, a, a, an overall schematic of a map, and one mode has a, a mini map, but yeah, basically, don't don't expect in in general in this game don't expect too much of a helping hand. You you depend on each other, and you really apply yourself. That's a that's about it. Otherwise, it's yeah, you're you're pretty much on your own. As you know, it's the zombie apocalypse. You you know. Now there are some long loading times and. It's, um, yeah, I suppose that about covers that. The, the same levels play very differently, differently depending on the modes. Now, the seven levels aren't in all modes, but pretty much all of them are in more than one mode. And this is indeed a Left 4 Dead clone, but just as Just Cause is a Grand Theft Auto clone, this justifies its own existence by offering an experience or yeah, that you can't find in the original. Among them is that player survivors can fight other player survivors. You can go and rescue AI survivors and when you play player survivor versus player controlled zombie, it's a team death match. It, or it, it can be a team death match. It isn't always, you know, going from the start of the level to the end of the level. Or, you know, refilling a generator. There's even some alien versus predator going on with vents and, you know, other shortcuts that zombies can use to surprise the survivors. And anything I say in this that relates to Alien vs. Predator, I should note, is based on the first game from 99 and the second game from 2001. I believe there's at least one that's come out since then. I haven't played it. I don't really know anything about it, so yeah. Now, the realistic sound effects and ambient sound effects really put you right there, and it's very much a bleak, apocalyptic atmosphere. It's the grim, post-apocalyptic zombie apocalypse of Left 4 Dead 1, not the campy one of Left 4 Dead 2. It's more realistic, and it's... It's slow-paced, where Left 4 Dead is a bit more fast-paced. You have abandoned shops and houses, flickering lights. Some areas have seen more chaos than others. There are cars that are, you know, turned over, some of them on fire. Like I said, the, the city, you can very much tell, it hit hard. And... The, the, there are doors and entrances that are blocked off. And basically, you can tell humanity has lost. The best the survivors can hope for is, yeah, surviving and maybe getting to a safe place and saving others, which also gives it somewhat more of a purpose or the, the players more of a purpose than Left 4 Dead where it is just we have to survive because we are immune and you know it's up to us to make sure that everyone's you know that if it's at all possible for humanity to survive it's up to basically the four of us here it's also you know there are others that you can save and they definitely need your help to save them now, regardless of the mode you play, this is very much 
human beings versus zombies. And in this, again, unlike Left 4 Dead, human beings can turn into zombies, which, you know, where in Left 4 Dead, when, you know, when, when a player dies, it's one less person that you have to, you know, help out. In this, not only is it one person less, it's also a great boon to the other side. The the zombies just got a very powerful ally because the, the player-controlled zombies can do a number of things that the regular zombies can't, in addition to, you know, when, when you're playing against an AI, you can maybe kind of learn, how, you know, what they what they do, what how they act in certain situations. With a player, it's going to be more difficult. Which, so, so yeah, basically what it boils down to is it can, you know, it can go bad really, really quickly, and it gets much harder with every survivor killed. Which, you know, much like it will be in the actual zombie apocalypse. And it's very tense game, and at times very claustrophobic. Now, I already mentioned the workshop allows for level design. You can also make new backgrounds for the cell phone and such. It's a survival horror game and an independent game. It's highly immersive. It's not as good as Left 4 Dead, but it's a pretty good alternative with a different feel and some features that Left 4 Dead doesn't offer. Yeah. It comes with a server list, including server filters, and that's not in, you know, in opposition to Left 4 Dead, but I do feel it is very worth noting whenever a game offers that, because far too many new multiplayer games don't. And the filters are, you know, filtering out empty games, the full games, and the password protected ones. It would be nice if it maybe also had, like, difficulty settings the way Left 4 Dead does, but, yeah. And the... It's also worth noting, there is some lag and some unstable servers. You can't really set the rules in this other than turning on or off player control zombies and infection, which I believe is, you know, separate, which I'm not entirely sure. It seems like one goes with the other, but I, know, I suppose infection could be turned off and player controlled zombies still on so that when you die, you come back. Yeah, the um, but you know infection on and no player control zombies. I, don't know, I guess you just die then. But yeah, I didn't serve. I didn't set up any servers of my own. Now you have a minimalist HUD with basically shows stamina, health, your four item spots, and then ammo. Now, as I mentioned already, you can play 16 players, tops, and this goes both for co-op and versus modes. And this, this again, you know, Left 4 Dead, you're completely limited to four players to a team, which means that if you're not playing versus, it's just four players to a match. Now, when a match has ended, you'll get stats with points, damage done, you know, such and such, both for when you were a player survivor and when you were a player-controlled zombie, if you ever were, you know, either or both of those. And it will also show what badges were earned by what players. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now... It is a little unfortunate that both players and AI controlled, yeah, the, the terms survivor and zombie apply to both, which is why I choose to say AI survivor and player survivor 
and zombie and player control zombie. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate. I saw several people just straight up confused about the AI survivors, you know, because they're they're referred to as survivors, so yeah. Now the I suppose that about covers that. Now, like Left 4 Dead, this is a first person shooter with flashlight, you know, with with zombies as the enemy, and there's a flashlight on your gun. Although here it's not every gun, which makes it very interesting when you have to you know, you may have to choose do I want the better gun or do I want the gun with a flashlight? And you may find yourself you will find yourself in situations where you don't have a gun with a flashlight. And in the dark, that gets dangerous. Which doesn't mean that you're ever entirely without a flashlight, because your cell phone has a flashlight. But your cell phone doesn't shoot. So, yeah, that's, that's one of the many choices you have to make. Tactical choices, life or death decisions that you have to make in this game. And the flashlight will move when you reload, which... Yeah, and you you want to reload at the right times. You don't want to, you know, suddenly be without. Yeah, be standing there with an empty gun at the at the worst possible time. Now there are some awkward elements to this. Some features don't always work. Like GPS will sometimes not quite work the right way, and footprints will sometimes lead into an impassable, you know, they're, they're intended to show the, the direct path. I'll, I'll get more into these aspects, but sometimes they will just, yeah, they will lead into an obstacle instead. And part of this is that sometimes the hit detection is somewhat off. This is especially clear when Basically, when you're when you're trying to climb something as a zombie, sometimes it will try. From, let's say the the item you're trying to climb is here, you might be triggering it here because when you get here, it may not want to trigger, and so you will climb up into the air and then fall short of what you were trying to climb. Yeah. Now. The it's also a little annoying when you want to play with friends. You basically just have to coordinate servers. Yeah, and multiplayer doesn't say who killed who outside of the mode hunted. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure if that's intentional or yeah. Now, unlike Left 4 Dead, this does not have outlines for players, which you know is also true of Left 4 Dead's realism mode. And in this, you can split up. You know, it's, it's another one of those tactical decisions where in Left 4 Dead there's very much this threat of special infected incapacitating players, which requires another player to come by and rescue them. In this, there is no incapacitating and Essentially, no special infected. I'll get more into that, but yeah, if you know, you can split up. You can go off entirely by yourself. You may be a you know bigger target like that, but you know the less time you spend in the level, the less you know you will. The less time there is for the zombies to get the better of you, and. The, the big levels mean that it can sometimes be very beneficial to be splitting up and going off on different paths until someone finds the right one. Now, and in this, the characters don't automatically say what they need. It can be difficult to find the, you know, fellow player survivors, especially in escape and panic objective, which is where you really are going around trying to find the way out. 
Now, whenever a player, player survivor leaves a match, dies, gets turned into, you know, turns into a zombie, or an AI survivor is saved, basically the any gun any guns and ammo they had on them will be dropped where they were there to be picked up by the other players now there is this unfortunate thing with ammo that if there's a lot in a pile you can't really go in and just you know try to pick up and it will pick up whatever you can use from the pile which yeah, when it's a big pile, it can be, you know, you're trying to move the mouse, trying to highlight the type of ammo you want to pick up, because maybe the other types you already have a full clip of, you know, full carry capacity of. Yeah, and in the, when, when it's really dangerous, you really badly want for the, you know, to quickly be able to pick up the right ammo. Now, the this has dynamic gameplay in that every round is changed with, you know, randomized placement of guns and ammo. The path you take will be changed. You know, objectives and objective items, meaning that you can't predict where, you know, what path might be blocked off you know, the order of locations, much less objective items, yeah. Which again, you know, Left 4 Dead, when you've played a level once, you know how it goes. And it's also, it doesn't have any, you know, outside of the refilling, you know, yeah, refilling gas canisters and such, there isn't really any item finding. This one plays a lot like a regular single-player survival horror game, but with fellow players, you know, with, with objectives, with items, you know, adventure genre elements like that. Yeah, this is very much a game that I've been, you know, wanting to see for years. Now, this allows you to board up windows, doors and windows and other entrances with a nail gun, which does mean you, you have to find the nail gun and pick up boards. When you just find the nail gun, it's, you know, it doesn't come with boards. But there are these piles of dozens of refills, not infinite, and every time you refill, you get excuse me, four new boards, and each, excuse me, or let's, yeah, let's just go with four new boards, and each board will fully board up an entrance. Now, the thing with the, you know, the boarding up will, of course, slow down zombies. However, you can't open boards, so, you know, unlike doors, so you'll have to really think about when and where to, yeah, to board up and such. And you may also be left with, you know, a nail gun and a couple of boards, but no refill pile in sight. Or, or maybe the refill pile is in a, an area that's already been overrun by the zombies and you may not be able to deal with them and get to the... So yeah, you may be, you know, counting the boards the way you count the bullets. Very careful to not spend them all. You know, don't spend them all in one place. Because you might be stuck with, you know, badly wanting you had just one more board. And yeah. Basically, the throughout the game, you're constantly making life or death decisions, tactical decisions. Now, you you can shoot between and some through the board. You can shoot through various thin materials. It goes for doors and yeah, 
things like that as, as well. But yeah, you can shoot between them and some through them without, you know, without the boards taking too much damage. However, if you fire a shotgun or you try to melee, that might break the boards, which can also come in handy for if you, if you find that you have to get through a door that has been boarded up. Now, you have to stand still to board up, and it's it has this... Basically, you have to be standing in a very specific position, not too close, not too far away, and at the right angle. It's, you know, I appreciate that they wanted to make it difficult, and that's good. The thing is that sometimes it kind of goes on and off, like where you're supposed to be standing and such, and it doesn't bring up a progress bar. So th there are times where it'll very much start and stop of you putting on boards, and then after several of those, it has actually boarded up. And other times, you know, whenever it stops, you have to start over boarding it up. It also is a little annoying that it doesn't lock you in place. So you have to, by yourself, be standing still. Which is, again, that's, that's an aspect where Left 4 Dead is better. And this, the same is true for healing. Healing doesn't lock either player in place. If you're trying to heal someone else, neither of you are locked in place. So it's very much, you know... Yeah, if you're trying to heal someone else, both players have to agree, okay, healing now, and it's kind of where, and, you know, in Left 4 Dead, you can basically force the other player to the same way, you know, sometimes the bots will force you to be healed. Except, you know, if you swap around to be carrying the, you know, healing thing or chest paddles or whatever, it will block them from, but the, you know, the bots are persistent, so, yeah. Now, this is very much traditional zombies, slow-moving zombies with no ranged attack, and to put them down, it's best with a headshot, or you can try to destroy so much of their body that they're just no longer effective, but if you shoot the leg off, legs off, they will crawl at you. So yeah, this is these are Romero zombies. So that's yeah. And the mm -hmm. I already mentioned that you can play, you know, yeah, when you play co-op in this, you can be anywhere from two players to 16 players. Where again in Left 4 Dead it has to be four. If if there aren't four, then some of them will be bots, and the bots can be really frustrating in in that game. So if, even though they're not too bad for you know by bot standards, but yeah, and in this you know it's again because there's no threat of incapacitation, and in this it does adapt to the amount of players, player survivors. It is not drop in and out if you, you know, which again, Left 4 Dead is drop in and out. In this, you'll spawn at, spawn at the start area, and you may even spawn as a player-controlled zombie. And it can really change up the dynamic, where again, drop in and out doesn't really do that except, you know, yeah, when a player leaves or enters, the the skill level might vary from the other players, where in this, you know, sometimes the players have to return to close to the original spawning start, yeah, to the start area, and if a new player comes into that, then maybe they'll have an easier time or a harder time, depending, so yeah. Now, the cell phone is a great element here. You have to put it away. You, you know, if, if you pull it up, you can see what it says. And regardless of the mode, it will offer something useful. Although, you know, in Panic Classic, it's not super useful. But it, basically, you can get the same 
the, the same help from just, you know, holding down tab, you know, checking, but nevertheless, every other mode, it has something very useful. But yeah, you have to put it back away if you want to shoot. And like I already mentioned, it has a flashlight. Now, the it's also the, the one thing where when a player dies, yeah, the, the cell phone is the one thing that none of the others can pick up. It's somewhat of a postmodern, postmortem, post-apocalyptic tombstone, which, given that you didn't write a will, I postulate that postponing writing a will will lead to posthumous regret, because the moment a player dies, the much like in real life, the, those around him, the closest to him, will argue over which of what he had is whose, and in this case it's of course the guns and ammo. Now this is very much geared toward co-op, and yeah, if if you're playing with people who really aren't keen on co-op or not as good or much better, there's going to be, you know, there will be trouble. Now, and by yourself, you're very much an easy target. The zombies hiss and moan, whinge and whine. They can be on fire. If, you know, if they pass through fire or get close enough to fire, yeah, they'll be on fire, and you know the yeah they're not necessarily gonna avoid it. They're zombies. They you know there's only so much brain yeah left running. So yeah, there are some exploits in this that some players utterly abuse. The graphics are fine. The zombies never become this the amorphous blob of Ray zombiness that Left 4 Dead, that they sometimes do in Left 4 Dead. Now, and a number of the zombies are zombified versions of the player survivors, so you really can't tell that it's, you know, your former comrades coming back to kill you. You can tell by a silhouette or just movement animation whether you're looking at a zombie or a survivor, the, the zombies will sort of be hunched over, and obviously if they're closer, you'll even more be able to tell. Now, the gore is great. You can hack and blow limbs straight off. Now, if you get infected, you will turn, and you, know, you can choose not to tell the others if you were bitten by a zombie, but you know, it's kind of tacky. You can, you know, you can hope to maybe find a cure, and when, you know, as you are turning, the, the audio will go kind of slow-mo, and the screen will kind of white or gray out. So, you know, when it happens, you'll be able, you'll know. And that's when you really ultimately have to make the decision. Do you want to be you know, this great risk to the others, yeah, or, you know, do you want to be a jerk about it or or not? And infection is, you know, random, but a bite has a higher, you know, percentage chance of infecting you than claws do. But, you know, you can be at a very low, you know, health, yeah, and not turn from many attacks, or you can have just almost complete, you know, health and turn. So, if if they attack you even once, you're at risk. So, like I said, it's very much, yeah. the The game isn't holding your hand at at any point. Now. Turning into a zombie is the only way that a player survivor will turn into a player-controlled zombie and remain in the same place. If you die, you respawn as a zombie. Now, so yeah, with that, 
you know, if you're in a small area or if the the survivor who turns is close to the yeah to to other to a few other survivors maybe ones who don't have a lot of health or maybe in a you know small tight area yeah huge risk now the you can sneak past zombies basically you have to be a bit far away flashlight turned off of course and you have to be moving slowly you can also outrun them and they may lose interest or just you know forget about you if yeah far enough away now like the the trailer shows you can find a coin it's fairly rare and it's you know but but yeah like the trailer shows you can throw it to distract by the sound but you only have the one so if you want it back you're gonna have to go pick it back up so yeah make <laughs> again making that decision that yeah now like Left 4 Dead this doesn't have any upgrading it's very much you know pick up and play except this has a very steep learning curve but yeah you know you can you can take a long break from it and if you know when you come back if you still remember you know you don't have to worry about ugh I have to start over with weaker guns or yeah anything like that and it's also there isn't really a story there's kind of a premise although Left 4 Dead has more of a especially the second one more of an overall overarching story and the characters are a lot less chatty which basically here it's all order related and there's a really useful menu for it where yeah left for that it gets really annoying when they're saying I mean it's nice and all that they're engaging with you know it, it helps the the atmosphere but you can't really turn it off and then it's you know they say a bunch of things that really the players should notice by themselves you know oh there's a special infected we have you know they they give off a noise and they're fairly distinct looking also and you know when someone needs to be healed it's right there on the HUD yeah this and and it in Left 4 Dead it gets in the way of voice communication which in this yeah it's much more yeah and in fact in this you can even turn off the you know the things that they do say so yeah if if you don't want any of that to be if you want to go pure voice or none at all the game completely allows it this technically doesn't have bots by which I mean you can't go in and play a match where there are player survivors yeah who who have the same like I said there are AI survivors but those are purely they, they don't have the same abilities that player survivors do and they're really just there for you to rescue you, you very much have to protect them and you know they yeah they're not going to help you out with objectives yeah now which which does mean you know if you're playing if there aren't a lot of people playing for whatever reason though usually you can find servers with a bunch of people playing at least yeah you you can't get you know bots to help you and you also if you're playing by yourself in this unlike Left 4 Dead you won't have bots that you know support you so yeah you you can there are modes in this you can play entirely by yourself now the and yeah this this does not have enough content and it's less refined than Left 4 Dead 
and they're the same price. So, yeah, if, if you're deciding a first-person shooter with zombies to get, you don't have either of these. Yeah, Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2. If you do have Left 4 Dead 2, or just if you're looking at both of them and you're really like, you know, I want a game that's really difficult and one that really gives the full zombie experience, this is your game. And I, you know, I actually, I said in the Left 4 Dead, you know, my reviews of both games, that they represent the ultimate you know, zombie experience, that this is really where you... Yeah, because it's so open, the zombies are everywhere, and there are so many of them, and you can't actually kill all of them. They're, they're going to keep coming, one way or the other. And it's survival horror. Yeah, I maintain that Left 4 Dead is that. But this, being a Left 4 Dead clone, and with additional features that bring it more towards... Yeah, yeah. This is even more of an ultimate. Yeah, yeah. Some, some something like that. And this, you know, again, this has the slow zombies where they're the modern fast zombies in Left 4 Dead, and there are no zombies in this that are completely unlike traditional zombies where. All the special infected in Left 4 Dead are very unlike traditional zombies. Now, the I suppose that covers that aspect. There is no rescuing the the dead player survivors in this. There are times when you'll be moving between rooms and sealing the doors behind you to keep out the zombies. This is especially true of extraction mode and escape mode. With, you know, with, with the aforementioned boarding up. Now, this is addictive, exciting, intense. Once I started playing this, I stopped playing Left 4 Dead 2, and I, I don't miss it. And the in the menu, you can choose or set to random between the three, you know, music tracks. You can play, you know, I already mentioned you can play by yourself. If you choose solo mode, is purely over LAN, and if no one joins over LAN, yeah, you can play by yourself in escape and extraction mode, not the, yeah. Now, this has no infinite ammo pistols. There are no, you know, bottomless piles of ammo, you know, frequent piles. In this, you're counting every bullet, and you may be forced to use a gun that really isn't good for the situation, and you, you're sharing guns and ammo with the yeah with the other players and it's a game that allows you to lose which is far too rare these days it's not the over the top action of recent survival horror it takes the subgenre back to its roots with a disempowered player who yeah the odds are against you now you can always melee even with the cell phone out you can melee and when you have the cell phone up, you can, you know, hold it straight up to your eyes and really focus on it, which you will need at times, or you can just have it out. And you can scroll through, you know, text messages and such. Now, there are times where the horde will come at you from all angles. This is especially true of extraction and escape. You really don't want to stay still in any, you know, yeah, stay in any one area for too long. The pacing as far as horde attacks and general zombie presence is quite good. Now, obviously, the danger of the zombies is that 
there are too many of them, Sid. Two people in the audience just chuckled and then felt really bad about that. Yeah, if, you know, basically the threat of the zombies is being overrun by them. Now, there is a riot cop zombie who has, yeah, a lot of armor. You know, he's, he's wearing Kevlar, and the player-controlled zombie, zombies may spawn as him. It is the only special zombie I, you know, there are no faster zombies, which, you know, the player-controlled zombies can move fairly fast and regular zombies as well. Not quite, you know, just endless running the way you see in you know, Left 4 Dead and such, but yeah. But it's, yeah, there, there isn't a special zombie that's faster, there isn't one that's especially stronger and such, and that is, you know, the, the zombies, the special infected in Left 4 Dead are very much, you know, I wish they were closer to traditional zombies, but they do change things up. You know, they, yeah, from, from a tactical standpoint, they're quite well done. Now, if you're on a ladder or boarding up or healing, either yourself or someone else, you can't shoot. There are four difficulty settings, and even on the easiest, easiest one, it's very challenging. And the higher the difficulty setting, the more the more friendly fire, the the more zombies, the more co-op is required, and the less ammo you have. Now you can sprint away from zombies and in general sprint around. You know this, of course, you know obviously keeping in mind this this varies based on how many zombies there are, where you are. You know if they're blocking your path, you can't necessarily run, but yeah, in general you can sprint and this makes it very useful for backtracking, which again can be very useful. Now if the zombies get your scent, then they will pursue you, but otherwise they'll more or less leave you alone. Or at least they'll, they'll only attack when you get really close. It can be somewhat counterintuitive that you you know you swap teams when you die, and you know there are players who quit when they get killed in turn. There are those that help the player survivors by luring the horde away from them. It does you know it does also allow avenging you know if if a fellow player really didn't cover your back or really didn't share his ammo, there you go. You can get back at him now. You know, you can go all bitter and like, you know, well, if I can't win as a survivor, neither will they. But, yeah, there isn't really a an incentive to, you know, be a zombie, which if in, in for example, Kane and Lynch, you know, mainly Dog Days, I think in Dead Men too, but I never got around to playing a match in Dead Men Nobody's really playing it. Nobody's playing Dog Days either. But anyway, in Fragile Alliance, there is, you know, sooner or later, one of the players will probably backstab the others. You know, it just, in that it's very much, the, the money will be split between the players who get out. And thus, if only one player gets out, he gets to keep the money. So, yeah. And if there was something like that in this where it would make sense to go zombie, like maybe the first player to become a zombie gets some kind of special benefit, like, you know, becoming the right cop zombie for at least the first life, something like that. As it is, it's kind of just, man, it's, you know, I mean, losing and just becoming a player-controlled zombie I almost feel like, well, I might as well just lose completely and be out of match, you know, at, at times. It, yeah. Now, the it's rare to win in this, even on the lower difficulty settings, even with many, even skilled players. Yeah, it's very much, it's like 
the the good Grand Theft Auto, you know, yeah, it's like Grand Theft Auto. You've got to be prepared. You've got to plan. You have to really apply yourself, and even then, it might take some luck, but at least really satisfying hard-won victories. Now, the the game is hard through and through, and you know there are there are other aspects where this really isn't for everyone. And yeah, I'm I'm not saying that the people who dislike this game are just not good enough at it. It's very much you know. Yeah, it's it's just not for everyone, and it definitely does get frustrating to play for a long time and lose just you know really close to winning. But yeah, at the same time, it's also a real incentive to to keep trying because you got that close. Now, and and it is worth noting that Left 4 Dead is also quite challenging. But it does also offer less, less challenging, you know. Yeah. Now, you spawn with a pistol and/or an SMG, or maybe you know a med kit. You, you'll basically have a weapon, a gun when you spawn, but. It's randomized what exactly, yeah. And you, you know, when you sprint and use melee, you will, you know, it'll cost stamina. And you really have to watch that because otherwise you'll suddenly be, you know, you can't melee if you're out of stamina. You can't sprint if you're out of stamina or jump for that matter. Jumping really takes a chunk out of stamina. So, yeah, be careful with, with that one. And when you use melee, if you're behind them and they haven't seen you, you can insta-kill. And otherwise, you you click, you know, to pro to do a melee attack, which then has maybe half a second of pause because you didn't have it prepared. You know, you didn't have it like pulled, ready to yeah. Or you can hold the button to charge it, and then when you release the button, it will instantly attack because yeah, you had it readied. And depending on you know, yeah, primary or secondary fire, you'll do a horizontal or a vertical swing, and you know the horizontal becomes a forward slash in the case of knives and such. You have to get really close for it to work, and yeah, you you know, it's maybe once per zombie that you have to get really close, and again you run out of melee of, of stamina by doing a lot of melee. So yeah, it's slow melee in this is slow and blunt to Left 4 Dead's fast and sharp. Here it really captures how hard it is to kill someone else, and it doesn't help that they're already reanimated. Now the guns include pistols. SMGs, assault rifles, snipers, rifles, shotguns, and then the melee. And the the bigger guns, you know, again, it's if you get headshots, one headshot will put down a zombie other than the riot cop one. The bigger ones are for, you know, crowds of zombies and player-controlled zombies. Now, one of the items here is a pocket light, which basically if you if you're running around with a gun that doesn't have or or an item, you know, a, a gun that doesn't have a flashlight or an item, the the you know pocket light will be in your chest pocket, you know, total silent hill style. And you yeah, you can turn that on or off as you like, but it won't move completely with your gun, it'll move with your torso, so yeah. Now, and yeah, the, the items thing, that's, you know, that's very much where it's, 
actually, yeah, let me get more into the, the item. In addition to the weapons already mentioned, you also have explosive explosives which are rare and come at a low carry capacity and they're very powerful so yeah again co-op don't don't be near the blast and don't let your buddies be near the blast either the they are a grenade and an IED which you manually place on a flat surface and then remote detonate with yourself and the secondary fire for any, basically any gun, is bringing up the iron sights, which again is something you really miss in Left 4 Dead. And yeah, it, it works the way iron sights work in these games. You know, it zooms slightly, it, get, it gives you more accuracy, and it also means you move a little slower and such. Yeah. You have four item slots. And you can't carry the same exact gun twice, but you can carry more than one of the same type. Like, you can carry three different pistols at the same time, no problem. But you can't carry two SIGs, for example. Now, the, the melee weapons include a knife and fire axe and a baseball bat. And the, and, and the four slots... It's both weapons and items, so yeah, if you're running around, if, if there are objective items, you may have to throw away a weapon in order to, yeah. And a melee weapon also, you know, requires one of those, so sure, you can melee without a melee weapon, but not that well. And yeah, it's, it's very much, you know, how many guns and which ones, you know, might you run out of ammo and... Yeah, how, how much room for objective items and how long are you going to carry the objective items? You know, are you going to, maybe it'll come in useful later or maybe you're risking not carrying something more useful. So yeah, like I, yeah, life or death decisions all the time. Now, but, but yeah, the, the item carrying is an area where this is a lot less streamlined than Left 4 Dead, where... It's literally just, you know, one heavy weapon, one less heavy weapon, a healing item, and then pills. Yeah. Now, bullies pass, bullets pass through bodies, so when zombies line up, you can kill several with a single bullet. This, this happens every so often. Now, as a player-controlled zombie, you can blend with the other zombies, which makes you less likely to, you know, the, the player survivors are not going to notice you as a player-controlled zombie. You know, it's not apparent from just your, you know, the, the skin of the, of, of the player-controlled zombie. It's only when you're running around doing player-controlled zombie stuff. And you can roar attracting nearby zombies and it has a very distinct animation, you know, basically they'll, you know, do the, both the player-controlled zombie roaring and the, the zombies, you know, nearby will will do that animation, and the, the noise will, will also, so, yeah, player survivors will be able to tell that just happened, you know, yeah. Yeah, attracting nearby zombies, maximum of 15, and yeah, you have your own little squad there, and you can't steal them from other player-controlled zombies. Now they, you know, they'll concentrate on you, making it very useful to, you know, you you can thus attack with a horde like that. And yeah, if you're if you're part of a horde that's attacking and you're blending, the player survivors aren't going to target you, especially. You know, they you might get unlucky and still be shot, but yeah. Now, you can also command them, which is basically go there. So, yeah, it's totally real-time strategy kind of thing. And then you have vision, which basically shows, you know, it highlights who are in your squad, where you've sent them to go, and you have footprints that lead, you know, a direct path to player survivors. 
and it also has this sort of black light kind of thing going on. It highlights breakable doors, functions as somewhat of a night vision, and it, you know, it highlights player survivors as well. Now, and then you can grapple, allowing you to bite this. This is a lot like insta-killing as player survival with melee. Basically, you have to be behind them, and actually, it's it doesn't even matter if they've seen you, but you have to be behind them. And, yeah, basically, it allows you to bite them, and, yeah, there's a pretty good risk you just infected them, but it also stops you dead, in, you know, it stops both you and the player dead in your tracks. It takes time and costs stamina. You know, you're you might be shot while you're doing it. So, but, yeah, that covers everything about that. If you die too much as a player-controlled zombie, you will be a cockroach, which, you know, the cockroach is the, you know, the one life form that is sure to survive, even the zombie apocalypse. And the cockroach can be killed, and, you know, basically... No matter how many times you die, the cockroach, you'll keep coming back to the cockroach. And it essentially works as a spectator. Now, if, you know, sometimes when you join a match, you will be either player controlled zombie or even the cockroach for the entire round, which can be kind of annoying. Now, I may have already mentioned, the player survivor team can lose really fast if just one of them becomes a player controlled zombie or, yeah, at the hands of a player controlled zombie because of the abilities that the regular zombies don't have and just something like, again, the, the human drive or however you want to put it. You can also climb fences vault. It, it functions as the vault of you know other recent games and I've already mentioned the limitation to that but it gives you paths that the other that, that the player survivors don't have other zombies have it as well but again if they if a regular zombie doesn't have your scent it's not going to climb over a fence to get at you it, you know if they'll they'll leave you alone if they don't particu- if you don't get very close so yeah now you can you can sprint a lot like a player controlled zombie much more than the player survivors so i guess in that one case death is an energy drink and yeah it doesn't cost a lot of stamina and the stamina refills really fast jumping is still very you know very much, costs a lot now, zombies can't climb every surface the way, you know, every flat surface the way a, yeah, a, an infected in Left 4 Dead can. But they, you know, there are a number. Basically, anything the player survivors can climb, the zombies can also climb. And there are a few, and yeah, you if you can climb over like a fence or a, a small wall you know basically if it's not very far above you know not too tall over your own head you can climb over it and you know it's like vault the way that basically you go over to it, you press use and then it, it does which you know which again brings up if it doesn't work properly, it's just not going to work. It's not like you are sticking to the surface. Now, the I suppose that covers that. If you actually, I may not have mentioned the the vision also allows you to see in the dark as a player controlled zombie which yeah that's that's something that the player survivors do not have you know the flashlight only has so much range and the 
the vision of a player-controlled zombie doesn't give away that, the zombie, that it's a player-controlled zombie or that he's there. You can be hiding in the dark and the you know using vision and the player survivors won't know you're there. Now, once bitten, twice shy, and forever a zombie for the round, anyway. I appreciate the commitment, but it is frustrating to, yeah, and some players, su you know, yeah, suicide to join the zombie cause, which is also annoying to the other players. You know, you can't go in and choose the team. It The, the game chooses for you, and if it's not too late in the session or such, you will join as a player survivor. Now... The, the the player survivors and the player controlled zombies aren't completely even. There are some levels and areas that very much favor one over the other. And again, Alien vs. Predator evens them out more. The theory is that the zombies can overrun the player survivors, but in in both panic modes it's only player controlled zombies and it starts with only the one it's yeah it you know and in that case it's also of the four mentioned abilities you know command roar and you know yeah command roar and blend are useless you you know you only have vision and you can of course still grapple and you know climb but yeah so can regular zombies so yeah and those modes start with only the one player controlled zombie and it's very much um, yeah that can really favor the player survivors sometimes some yeah, I'll, I'll get more into that. And, you know, in Alien vs. Predator, the Xenomorph is the the one that only has melee attack, but it's also very fast and very maneuverable, you know, climbing on walls and ceilings. And, yeah, and it can jump out at, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that those abilities would work for traditional zombies in this. I'm just saying it does need work. Now, the modes themselves, the, there is an extraction mode where a group of player survivors have to find and rescue AI survivors that are holed down in buildings. And they get GPS coordinates to the AI survivors who are also marked and separately from the, you know, both AI survivors and player survivors are marked on the, you know, the minimap GPS, which you can also zoom on. And it's, you know, and, and the GPS leads you to the building. And you then have to defend against waves of zombies, which is referred to as holdout. And when holdout is done, you escort them to extraction point. And the AI survivors, it's, you know, the classic thing of when you press use at, a, at an AI survivor in this case, you toggle between follow and stop. And they literally do follow you or stand still in that area. And only one player at a time can, you know, be, you know, be the one that they follow. And you will be told, you know, text when they're following you, when they're not following you. And they have guns, they will fight, they can cover you while you board up and the like. And with, you know, with any AI kind of thing in, in multiplayer and such, sometimes they get in the, way, in the way and sometimes they're too effective and really mess up the, yeah makes it frustrating or boring. And once they're extracted, you get new GPS coordinates. But if all of the AI survivors, all the current ones die, then the zombies win. 
and you're you know you're often running around boarding up entrances otherwise covering exits it this does this doesn't completely explain why we're holding out or why at this point where left for dead it's always well we just turned something on that's very loud or you know or very bright or the like and yeah the horde attacks here yeah it's it's not clear it makes sense from a you know from the standpoint of making the game challenging and giving some yeah you know making if if the zombies weren't going to attack in a horde then why couldn't the ai survivors just come out on their own kind of yeah there there needs to be that kind of thing but it doesn't really explain why which i feel like it could have been done fairly easily basically if if when you get to the house the ai survivors you know make the mistake of like turning the lights on and off in the building to like say oh here we are and then you get in and you're like oh you morons you just alerted all of them and you know every ai survivor group does that but yeah now not every player will spawn at the same place and so you you know you have to regroup you have to find each other before you go to the the building or at least that's a good idea because the first player to get to the extraction point activates holdout and it's activated by proximity or if you don't get there you know if you're taking your sweet time getting there it'll do it in excuse me in time you know anyway so yeah and the level opens up the the longer you play around and sometimes there's a bug here where it won't show or it won't unlock the extraction point escape and panic objective has a group of player survivors trying to find their way out of an area to safety and in panic classic it's the player survivors having to deal with the zombie threat now in to to cover escape and panic objective first you're running around solving these randomized objectives and you get a you know the moment you join you get the most recent text message of objectives and it'll then you know yeah tell you basically what you have to do although some of them are very vague like just we should look around for a path or yeah and some of them come with a proximity meter with a proximity meter counter and you again you don't have a map you don't have a compass and every new objective you get a new text message and the objective items include keys a gas mask a fire extinguisher and again each of these take up one item slot so yeah now and when you hold down tab you will get a you know an overview of all the different different uh, slots of the different players but not the carry capacity and there is some logic to where item uh, you know objective items will appear like fire extinguisher for example you know where basically to look in a building for a fire extinguisher and yes sometimes it will be there and it culminates in getting to an escape vehicle which won't wait around forever and some of these levels are purely a horde you know horde attack waves and sometimes you can complete a level in like 15 minutes sometimes you can play for 50 minutes and not complete it now in panic classic and panic objective there are no ai zombies but there are higher infection risks and yeah it starts with the one player controlled zombie and then yeah the zombie virus spreads and it's very tense and in panic objective it's essentially the same as escape 
Panic Classic is essentially team deathmatch with player controlled zombies versus player survivors and players spawn randomly all over the map which yeah again you'll it'll be a good idea to get to the same place to fight together yeah and the and there's a 20 minute time limit in panic classic where if yeah if the time is up then the player survivors win forcing the zombies to hunt and the zombies have 20 lives now this mode can sometimes be slow if the player controlled zombie can't find the player survivors and some choose to camp and or board up a small area and yeah that can really you know pretty much prevent the player controlled zombie from doing anything you can sometimes catch up to objectives but only once you know the level and finding other you know again if you're joining a match in progress and you know flashlights gunfire and such will tell you where you know the other players the ones who've been in the match for a while where they are and shortcuts will open up as you get further in the game now these you know these things are also how you find each other in you know in the final mode hunted where basically the limited resources have forced humans to turn on each other basically it's player survivor versus player survivor and zombies and player controlled zombies in there as well and you know you can forge alliances but it is last man standing and the moment you die you become a player controlled zombie which you know that's true of every mode but here it really makes sense because basically you you now it was always everyone versus each other so now that you're dead you're still playing everyone versus each other it's just that you know you aren't going to be the one to win and you can now help decide who might be the one to win you know you you again you can take revenge on the guy who killed you now and this is also where the big open levels they're very good for getting away from the zombies which again there are AI zombies in this mode but the player survivors may be able to see you if you're running around in the open and the cell phone here has the ability to scan for other cell phones and you can ping them and the noise you know will give them away and yeah and among these there's also the in biotech the research facility there are, there are these automatic sliding doors where you can hear from you know a couple of meters away if one of these doors is sliding open and you don't know if that's a fellow player survivor if that's a zombie or if that's a player controlled zombie and yeah any of those can mean death in hunted and if there's you know if the glass of uh, next to a sh uh, an automatic door has been slightly damaged it will shatter making much more noise when the the door automatically slides open so yeah be be careful around that and you know you can make noise to lure someone into a trap as well of course it's very intense and sometimes a round can be over in a matter of minutes now the I should also note there there are other noises that can give away your position. You may sometimes find a little foul, you know, not to be confused with Mrs. Scratchit, who I've always found foul more than a little. No, these are ravens. Again, you know, if anyone was going to survive the zombie apocalypse, and yeah, they'll literally fly off when you approach them, which can you know it really adds to the atmosphere and if there are others around looking for you 
it might alert them to your presence. Now, the this also, you know, in this the the various modes basically you have four varied dynamic modes, and I'm counting panic objective and escape as just one mode because they're essentially the same as far as, you know, again, the, the only real difference between them is whether it's one player controlled zombie versus the player survivors, or if it's all the player survivors versus originally just AI zombies. And comparatively, you might say Left 4 Dead 2 has just one mode. Basically, if you're playing versus, it's just it's one team against another team. And you know, depending on the mode, there will be more or less of the elements of the basic. You know, when you're playing versus in Left 4 Dead 2, all the elements are there. You know, you have yeah, you have the versus, you have the co-op, you know, you have player controlled, special infected, and there will be, you know, stuff to fill up with fuel. There will be holding out in an area while the zombies, you know, for a while, which is essentially what survival mode is, and there you also have scavenge mode. Yeah, it's it's Again, it's it's fun, and overall, it is a better game. But it doesn't offer that many different modes. Where again, to just briefly sum up, in this, you know, you have you you have escape, which plays like a single-player survival horror game. You're running around, you're finding finding items, you're finding. You know, finding out where to go, finding the the exit. You're not just fighting your way there. You're actually solving along the way. And you know, you have extraction where you're going around, and you're not really finding anything. You're just making your way to the next building. You know, you know where the buildings are, and after a little while, you'll know more or less how to get there. It's it's not as, you know, you're, once you've played for a little while in the same round, you know where to go, where in Escape, you're constantly looking for the way to go. And Extract is more, more based on defending these AI survivors and, you know, holding out in these small buildings, which happens in Escape, but it's less frequent and it's more, you know, and yeah, the dynamic is different when you have to watch out for AI survivors as well. And then you have Panic Classic, which is basically, you know, yeah, like it's it's Team Deathmatch, but the the zombies start with only the one and it yeah it's it's basically you know that you're the 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 one zombie you're up against at at first it's just the one zombie but once he infects the others it'll be more and more you know that he is just there to stop you and you don't have anywhere to go the there's no real escape of the you know, again, escape, you're running around looking for the way out. In Panic Classic, it's pure team deathmatch. You know, yeah, typical team deathmatch, which, again, Left 4 Dead doesn't really have. And then you have Hunted, which is straight up everyone, you know, last man standing, free for all, which, yeah, survivors fighting other survivors, nothing like that in Left 4 Dead. So, yeah, I believe that covers everything. So, yeah, it's it's very challenging. You you know, there are a lot of skills you have to master, a lot of little decisions that you have to make. And yeah, it it really plays like a a more open kind of 
I don't know if Resident Evil, I haven't played a lot of Resident Evil, but yeah, it, it plays like a single player survival horror with zombies where you're fighting with you know your buddies and you know that if even a single of the of the players is infected or or dies, you you know your odds just dramatically you know change for the worse. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.